Quick warning for you guys, the video you're about to see has a lot of flickering in it. If you don't like it, don't watch it, I'm sorry, but here it is. G'day guys, welcome back to my channel once again. I'm in my new brew shed, check it out, what do you think? It's great, um, I'm glad to be out here doing it in here rather than in the house and stinking the place out. But before I go any further, I'm doing a brew today. I'm gonna to do a Morgan's Amber Ale. It's a Royal Oak Amber Ale. Uh, apparently it's nice. So stick around for that, and I'll tell you a bit more about my shed. See you soon. Hey guys, welcome. Today I'm going to do a quick brew. Uh, I'm doing a Morgan's Royal Oak Amber Ale. Uh, a couple of guys over there on, on uh, YouTube said to me that it's a really nice tasting one. Um, ben Long. Hey Ben, how you going? Good to, good to talk to you mate. I have a Firmzilla that I want to do it in. This is another quick brew in a Firmzilla. I do have my Fermentosaurus which I will be using later on next week uh, with an all grain brew I'm going to do. I have to now sanitize my Firmzilla, which is a necessity, um, using Stella Sand, which I get from my local brew shop, uh, Firkin Cellars. Uh, and we shall continue. So for now, I'm just gonna do the dry malt, pop about two liters of hot water in this pot, mix it up with the dry malt and dissolve it. Then pour my extract in, dissolve that. And then I'll fill the Firmzilla up with, uh, where is it? We've got two litres here, there will be 23 litres all up. So I'll have to fill up the Firmzilla with about 21 litres of cold water, and then I'll pour a hot, concentrated wort into the Firmzilla, so that way I don't melt my Firmzilla. So, we'll see you soon. Okay, the hot water's here. I'll just show you guys what's going on. Pop it in there. Just put the hot water in the, uh, the pot like so. It's only two litres. And then I'm gonna throw in my Grab this, this is sanitized. Oh geez. I've got that I haven't had that smell for a while. This is um, just malt, ex uh, malt, dry malt, and uh, some sugars to ferment, so you get a bit of an alcohol volume. I don't want a high volume. I don't like high volume alcohol. I um, prefer to have something a bit lower so I can drink when I'm hot and not get drunk, which is what I like. But yeah, I'll just stir that in, just like that, until it pretty much dissolves. It's starting to dissolve now. So this hot water, when you put it in, it's over 60 degrees, it's nearly 100 degrees, but by the time you get it in, it's not. It sanitizes the pot, even though I've had sanitizer in, in here anyway, but it still sanitizes it a little bit more. So now I've stirred that in. I'll whack the lid on for now, just to keep it warm, while I open up the um, amber ale can, and whack our extract in there. So I'll just whack that on there. Be back soon. So as you can guess guys, I don't have any running water in here, so I need to go into the house to get some hot water. Great advice when you use an extract is to put it in a pot of hot water for about 15 minutes or so, so the heat gets in through the extract to soften it up, uh, heat it up so it runs much better. I know I say this in every video, but it's always great to hear. Uh, people forget to do little things, and these are some of the things that I do. Once that's hot, I'll then open her up, and pour it into my new upcoming wart, which is underneath here. So I'll leave that sitting there for 15 minutes and I'll come back to you. I have seen some videos out there where people are saying that the uh, ferment, Firmzilla lids are hard to get off and undo. Uh, there is a solution to that and it's not a bad one, it's a good one. Um, especially the threads on the actual Firmzilla down the bottom where the actual valve is and everything else. All you need to do, really, is pop. Now, some of you don't like this, which, fair enough, you don't. 
it hasn't affected my brew, so I'm, I'm going to keep doing it until it does. Food grade grease. So you can just basically run food grade grease around the thread of your sanitized lid, which I have. Just a, a little bit around it. And as you turn it, it will actually lubricate the whole thread. And also on the rubber seal here. So you just pop it around the rubber seal, just like that. Run it around your finger, just so it seals, or it makes it easy. So this will, we, we, this, this will uh, help for when you want to remove it later. Because uh, remove can be pretty challenging at times. So I've got my float, which is the uh, brew pickup float. Always ready because this is a pressure fermenter. This is what I'm going to use for. I'm going to use this for pressure fermenting every time I use it now. So that's going to be my pr pr pressure fermenter. Um, so once I've sealed that, it's all sanitized. I will then screw the lid on. And the lid, as it turns, the grease will actually spread itself around on the thread as I turn it. So that will help, hopefully, to undo it later. So I hope it's a good bit of advice. I hope it works for you guys. Oh, the other bit of advice too would be take some of your Stella Sand, your stand, uh, what is it, bar, star band, bar stand, star band, um, star sand. <laughs> I use this for all my breweries and I just sanitize everything as I go by spraying it, which is a much better way of getting it nice and sanitized. I know bacteria can get in this is, a, this is a better way to prevent it from getting into your brew. Uh, sometimes bad bacteria or bad yeast can actually improve the flavor of your beer. Just funny enough, it happens. Not often though. <laughs> so learning more and more all the time. So, okay, we're ready guys. We're ready to start putting the extract in. I'll just uh, open the can. Where's the can gone? Just here. So here's the can. This baby here is all nice and hot now. So I'll get my electric can open and I'll open it and I'll come back to you. See you soon. Okay, so my can's open. Uh, I'll open the lid up here. Oh, look how beautiful. Tastes nice. Get my spoon. Just spray my spoon down with a bit of sanitizer just to make sure it's actually sanitary again so nothing's landed on it and then I'll start to pour my extract in so the, what just fell in then so they call this an amber ale It's showing you. Look at that, hey? Very nice. It has a specific smell to it. It doesn't smell like um, some of the brews I've come across before, so it seems very interesting, this one. The interesting smell, I should say. So I'll just stir that in so it becomes uh, dissolved. It dissolves in there. I'll just whack my lid on there for now. I've got to get some water now, so um, I need to get some cold water. I don't have a tap here, I might have already said that. So I need to bring it in. I have to actually, I might actually pour it into my firmzilla in the kitchen and I'll come back with a full firmzilla. I'm going to put 21 litres and pour the rest of this in and we should make up 23 litres. So I'll be back soon. So I filled up my firmzilla up to uh, uh, 20 litres. I have actually got about a litre of water, a litre and a half of water in this, just to clean out the pot later when I throw it in. Just something a bit extra I thought I'd better do. So I still don't have a funnel. I know you guys have probably seen me spill this stuff before. Okay, so I'm ready to go. We'll pour this in. I don't think we'll spill any. There you go, no spilling. Oh, and she's full. That's up to 23 litres exactly. 
So we've got a little bit left in here. So it must be a three litre kettle. There you go. Just rinse that out a little. Just so I can get the rest of the extract that I didn't mix properly and settled on the bottom. All right. So I might measure what, how much fluid goes in that the kettle, I have to say, because I reckon I made a mistake, like usual. And this is what happens in the past. We've got 21, 2, 3. It is at about 23 litres. How about that? So I'll take out my spoon. I know I won't. I'll stir this. Mix it all through a bit. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. This is a new setup for me. I still don't know where my cameras are going to go. Now this water is aerated, so I don't really have to go nuts with it. Just check the temperature. The temperature is saying 22 degrees. Why look at that? Yeah, it is. 20. Yeah, we're looking at 22 degrees. So it's an ideal temperature at the moment for what I want to do. So we can actually add our yeast now. Okay, so I quickly sanitize my scissors as you can see there. They're um, sanitizing because uh, there could be a little bit of bacteria on it and I don't want that getting into my brew. So I'll, I'll whack this in now because we're at 22 degrees Celsius. So you'll see how it goes. Cut that open. This is so easy. This is so easy. Pour that in. I don't, I will one day do a, a yeast starter, which you might be, I might do in my next video as a, a yeast starter. Show you how I do it. Well, I've never done one before, so it's not something I have experience with. But that's it. Yeast is done. Don't need to stir it. It'll actually go in anyway and, and re regenerate itself. Not necessary. Just spray a bit of sanitizer on that again, just in case. Now I'll show you this. This here is my uh, my ball. This is the pipe that extracts a beer later on when I want to put it into a keg or bottle it. These ends are sealed tight they both can take either gas or beer lines each so it doesn't matter which side you put them on when you pop a gas into it it'll go and you'll see where the line comes out you'll know where to go put the gas in i put my spunding valve on the gas in line now i was talking again talking to people on youtube and they were saying ferment at around about 10 psi Okay, that's it. I'll just place this one on my bench. So we can see it better. And that will now happily ferment. I'm going to turn that. Oh, can do that. Okay, so I can get the handle in the right spot. Beautiful. Right, we're set to go. So I'll pop its jacket on. And we'll see it working soon. So just to protect the little thing. You don't want it to um, go nuts with cold or heat and keep the light out. And that's what this jacket's for. Zip that on. Now, I did notice though, they're great little jackets, but they seem a little bit too big for the Firmzilla. So I don't know where they've come from with the uh, design. But, nevertheless, it's good. Now I won't be letting that out of its jacket. At least for five to eight days. 